I love to say that games are a dialogue between the developer and the player. Whether your game is a simple match three or the latest VR-based high-octane eSport, you have a story to tell and gameplay to drive. Your players are more than happy to tell you what worked, what didn't, and help you improve your game for your next group of players. That is, if you know how to ask. You definitely should engage your players on social media and in forums, but that will be a very small and vocal subset of your player population. You can watch for reviews in the App Store, but this is a slow process. By the time you see a complaint here, it's already too late. What you want to do is build a game that will tell you how well the current gameplay is sitting with players, where they're getting stuck, why players are crashing, and what features your players want next. This process should be seamless and encourage participation from your entire player base, from your newest and most casual players to your most dedicated and hardcore. This is where many of Firebase's products come in, the most fundamental of which is Google Analytics. Let's take a look. If you haven't done so yet, you'll want to check out this getting started video with one important addendum. When you're creating your Firebase project, you'll need to hook it up to a Google Analytics account. I know that it may seem confusing that you need a Google Analytics account and a Firebase account, but Firebase uses Google Analytics to store and aggregate your game data. This will likely be the only time you need to know about this implementation detail, but many power users will find the integration incredibly useful. A side effect of this separation of concerns is that there are two slightly different setup flows based on whether or not you have a Google Analytics account configured. Here, I'm creating a project. I'll explicitly acknowledge that I want to use analytics with my project. Then, if I don't already have a Google Analytics account, I'll be given a chance to configure analytics and review and acknowledge some terms. Otherwise, I'll see this mildly intimidating dropdown box. If you only see one option here, it's probably safe to use, but you can always create a new account if you're unsure. Note that each game in an account is kept separate and what's called an analytics property automatically. That means that if you're a game studio that produces multiple titles, you can reuse the same account here since each game will have its own property. Or you may put each game in a different account. It's really up to you. In either case, the analytics data for each Firebase project will still be collected separately in its own analytics property. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use the default account if you're adding analytics to an existing Firebase project, you may not have enabled analytics when you first set up Firebase. Don't worry, you don't need to create a new project. Simply navigate over to the Analytics tab and click Enable Analytics. You can hook it up and try it out here. Oh, and just in case you decide analytics isn't for you, you can unlink it again by clicking on these three dots, then clicking Unlink. Just like in the Getting Started video, you want to pull in the Firebase Analytics Unity package. You'll have a Firebase init script that looks like this. Remember that Analytics is enabled by default, so you'll immediately start gathering data such as user retention numbers and rough geographic distribution. On Android, it's even initialized automatically so this call just ensures that Firebase itself is initialized on iOS and could be replaced with Firebase app default instance. If I jump over to my Firebase console, I can find my one, seven, and 30 day active player count, my retention cohorts for up to five weeks, and here's the geographic map of my players. I'll also see the breakdown of iOS versus Android players and how many are crash free. Of course, this is relatively empty right now since this is only a sample. Firebase also automatically generates event reports. If I go over to events under analytics, I can see events like first open and session start. Note that these take some time to populate. So this is something I won't expect to see until the day after I integrate analytics. 
if I click on first open, I can see how many times the event has fired, how many users have fired it, and how many times it occurred per user. This is pretty useful, but I have some more specific questions about my game other than whether or not my players are sticking around. So let's pull in some built-in games-focused analytics events. You can see what Firebase has built in by typing firebaseanalytics.event and waiting for your IDE's autocomplete. Or check out this doc page, link in the description below. So I found two super useful events, event level start and event level end. I already have a pretty fun idea for how to use these. Let's create a simple level logging behavior. We'll fire event level start and start. Then fire event level end in on destroy. By just throwing this mono behavior into a scene, I can automatically log the duration of that scene as a level. Oh, and for those of you who want to sound cool at a party, this particular pattern is called resource acquisition is initialization or RAII in the C++ world. Go forth and be the coolest person in the room. Now, I want to test this. So I'll create a script that will change levels when I click on a button. So I'll create a change level on click script. Create a serialized field called level to load. Make it an eye pointer click handler. And in on click, just call scene manager load scene. Let me create a main menu scene here. and have this button load a level called level one. I'll create level one. Then this button will go back to the main menu so I can test a whole playthrough. Let's add this event logging behavior. And in order for scene manager .load scene to work, I need to make sure that all of my scenes are in the build window. If I click run here in the editor, I can go back and forth. But I won't actually get any analytics. Firebase Analytics just happens to be one of the Firebase products that does not work on desktop. So I cannot test this in the editor. I'll cover both iOS and Android devices in this video. So let's start with Android. With Android selected as my build target, I can just click Build and Run right here. I have my Android phone plugged in, and I can click into the level and click out of it again. But the analytics events logged here still aren't showing up in my dashboard. In fact, it may take up to an hour to upload events and up to 24 hours for them to show up, which could be pretty problematic to test. So I want some way to verify this locally. If this is your first time interacting with the Android SDK directly, I recommend installing Unity's Android LogCat plugin, which adds Android LogCat under Window Analysis. I'll need to enter some commands using the Android Device Bridge, or ADB. This does require some command line work, but don't worry. Thanks to the LogCat plugin, I can click Open Terminal to get a terminal window open to the proper Android SDK's directory. Note that this may open up behind the Unity window. I'll also need to know my game's package ID, 
If I open up Build Settings, I can find it here under Other Settings. Don't worry about why I called my game Popsicle Platformer right now. That will make sense later. So with the terminal open, I'll type adb shell set prop debug.firebase.analytics.app, then my package name. This command does a few things. The most obvious is that events sent from this device for your game will appear in debug view, which I'll cover in a moment. It also excludes these events from your overall reporting, so you can feel free to experiment with the events in this mode. Finally, events are usually cached and sent up to Firebase in batches to conserve battery life, typically every hour on Android or when your game goes into the background on iOS. With this property set, events will go out as soon as possible. Now, to actually print analytics information to the terminal, I need to set the log tag fa to verbose and fa-svc to verbose. Now, if I build and run, the events will be logged, but won't show up with my game's normal events. But I can track the fa and fa-svc tags that I just configured by typing adb logcat s fa and then fa-svc into my terminal. When you're done debugging, you can type adb set prop debug.firebase.analytics.app.none to turn your debug mode back off for your game. Testing on iOS is a little different, and this section really only applies if you're on a Mac. You'll need to pass the command line argument fur debug enabled to enable debugging, then fur debug disabled when you're done. This is also a sticky setting. To do this, switch to iOS and click Build. Then I open the generated workspace in Xcode, click Edit Scheme, and add dash fur debug enabled here. Now I can click this big old build and run button to kick things off. Unlike Android, you'll see the debug logs in the Xcode output screen without any additional configuration. Oh, and remember that debug view that I mentioned a moment ago? After I verify that this is all working locally, I can open up the Firebase console and click on over to debug view under analytics. Within seconds of my events getting logged out to the terminal, they should appear here in this nice timeline. Not only does this let me verify that my events made it all the way up to the server, but they're much easier to read in this more graphical interface, at least for me. Oh, and this has the added benefit of letting you test your events, even if a test device isn't currently tethered to a development machine. Simply set some properties on a test device and you're good. So just plain events are already pretty useful. It's good to know that users load three levels per game, that they die to a boss, or whether or not they're purchasing any items but just knowing that an event happened is only part of the story. As game developers, designers, and community managers, it's super useful to know the context around why an event happened and to use it to inform more complicated second order decisions. For example, rather than just logging that a user purchased an item, maybe I want to log that the user purchased a time extender on level 10, or rather than they died to a boss, that they died to the level three boss without having tightened up the graphics. In the case of my simple level loaded event, I'd like to know which level was loaded so I can determine if maybe there's a clear favorite and I can start basing future level design decisions off of which levels resonate with my current players. I can do this with something called an event parameter. If I type Firebase Analytics.parameter, you can see the list of built-in parameters, or you can open this doc page, link in the description below. Parameter level and parameter level name both look super handy to attach to my current event. If you check out their documentation pages, you'll see that level is a 64-bit integer and level name is a string. So let me add these to my level logging event. In my on start, 
I'll cache the level name and level number from Scene Manager as a field. Then I'll add the parameters to my level start event. Down in on destroy, I'll send the cache parameters to my level end event. Next, I'll click build and run. I'll just use Android to now, but this will all work on iOS. I can see that the parameters appear in Unity console, and they pop up in debug view on the Firebase console. Note that there is a list of special games-focused events here, link in the description below. Firebase is especially aware of these events, and by using them, you may benefit from targeted games reporting. I know what you're thinking. How on earth did Firebase manage to come up with every possible analytics event and parameter that every game ever made or that ever will be made will use. Well, if you'll let me be honest with you for a moment, we didn't. There will be some events that only matter to your individual game. Let's see how those work. I've created this quick game called Popsicle Runner. That package ID suddenly makes sense, doesn't it? It's like an infinite runner, but finite. You see that I have this deadly spike pit and this really cool pickup. Here's the code where I detect that I fell into a spike pit. I'll add right here a new analytics event called died. This is a custom event and the analytics SDK doesn't have a pre-built constant for the event name, but that's fine. Most of your events will probably fall into this category. I can just go ahead and enter this event name as a plain old string. I'll also add a custom parameter called type and say spiky doom. So I die to my spiky doom. If I look at this pickup, here's where I detect that a player collects it in code. I'll log another custom event, got pickup. I'll also add a parameter called type and say coin. Some notes about these names. These can be up to 40 characters long, make only contain alphanumeric characters or underscores. You're generally best off using snake case as I've done here, but whatever you do, do not use spaces or punctuation. I'll play this game with the debug view open. I can see these events coming in, so I know that it's working. If you remember back in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that these event reports start getting generated after 24 hours. So let's jump ahead a day. And if I look over there, I can now see these events coming in, but not my parameters yet. If I were to open up an event, such as my died event, you won't see that the cause is spiky doom yet. To do this, I need to add the parameter to my event reporting in the Firebase console. So click these three dots and select Edit Parameter Reporting. The parameter name is the exact name you had in the code. So let me add type and click Add. And in the type field, I select text or number. This changes how you can filter and sort these. I'll select text since the parameter currently will display spiky doom. Although I do plan to have a moosey fate later. I'll do this again for got pickup and my level start and end events. Remember that I have numeric values for my levels as well. Now, if I go over to the event card, I can see my parameters appearing. Of course, there are limits to what you can do here. Each event can have up to 25 custom parameters. and can have up to 100 custom parameter reports in any project, 50 text and 50 numeric. Generally, this should be enough for basic reporting but there's no functionality to raise these limits. 
So you'll want to be a little cognizant of them in your design. While I'm here looking at events in the console, I want to talk about one more thing, conversion events. These events are what you may consider key performance indicators, or KPIs. For instance, first open is an event that's logged by default and also marked as a conversion event by default. So what makes a conversion event special? One benefit of marking an event as a conversion event is that it keys Firebase predictions into looking at the event so that it can start building up predictive models, associating player behavior with specified event triggers. Also key to your user acquisition strategy, these conversions can be imported into your Google Ads account. For instance, allowing you to associate an ad click with a specific conversion to gauge the success of an ad campaign. Since these are considered important, the events will be logged in real time as well. Now, if I consider one of my events a KPI, such as got pickup, I can simply toggle this little checkbox. Now this event will update in real time, allowing me to react if I made a level too easy. Maybe predictions will even start to predict if a player is likely to get this pickup so I can deliver them a harder level. There are limits to your conversion events though. You'll have a maximum of 30 for any project. So make sure you really identify your KPIs. And that about wraps up this getting started tutorial. There's plenty more to cover with respect to analytics. Most importantly, user properties that let you describe a consistent user state across multiple events and even filter events based on the state. There's also a product in Google Cloud called BigQuery that acts as what we like to call a data warehouse. You can automatically export your Google Analytics data to BigQuery to generate your own custom reports or even correlate Google Analytics data with data you've ingested from other products, even those external to Google. Finally, as I mentioned at the start, Google Analytics for Firebase is the key to unlocking the full power of Firebase's other growth tools. You can generate audiences with analytics data to deliver targeted game content with Firebase Remote Config, or even use Firebase AB testing to test two different game configurations against real users, using analytics data to determine which configuration was the most successful. Analytics can also drive predictions such as predicting if a user will spend money or churn, and audiences can be used to deliver targeted messages with Firebase Cloud Messaging. As always, I can't wait to see what kinds of awesome games you build next. Tell me what you're building or what you want me to talk about next, either in the comments below or at Puckstore on the Twitter. So long and have a wonderful time. <laughs>